Okay, here's this assignment today, not one of the more fun ones that you'll have this year. Um, the first thing we're going to do is kind of easy because you do kind of need to know it. It says, identify equations where the slope is visible. So that means basically, where do I have the equation where the y is by itself? Right there, it's by itself, so I would know the slope. That's negative 3. Here, the y is not by itself, so I don't circle that. Here the y is by itself, so there it's not, there it is, there it's not, and there it is, okay? Now it's important you know when the y is by itself, and that's going to help you get through this assignment. What does this mean? It means x is greater than or equal to 3. So what are some possible values for x? Well, it could be 3 because you can be equal to it. You could also be 4, 5, 6, 7, and on down the line. Okay. Less than negative 1. So, I mean, negative, you could be equal to it too. So negative 2, other things that are less than negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. The bigger the negative, the less it is. Okay, and you can keep going. Now, what you see is more graphing, but you have what's called domain restrictions. Now, I'll explain what that means, but first let's get the line graphed. Now, here the y is by itself, so there's two ways that I can graph it. There's two good ways to graph it when the y is by itself. You pick which one works best for you. There's me picking 0, 1, 2, as long as I don't have a fraction as my slope, okay? I don't. And I can just plug those in. So I'd have negative 5 times 0, because x is now 0, plus 3, and that gives me 3. Negative 5 times 1 plus 3 is negative 2. And then negative 5 times 2 plus 3 is going to be negative 7. Okay? So 0, 3. You don't need to label the points, that's just me showing you where, what, how I got it. 1, negative 2, so I go right 1, down 2. Okay, and then 2, negative 7, so 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, then I can take my ruler, or a straight, something you can draw a straight line with and then just connect the dots, but make sure your line goes all the way through the, the graph, okay? Like that. Okay, arrows on both ends to begin with, okay? Arrow, arrow. Now another way you can graph that, of course, is to use your M and B. You can pick whichever one you want, label that M and that B, and then slope and y-intercept. So the b is a y-intercept, so that would be at 3. That's a horrible looking line. I totally whiffed. Or I can go negative 5 over 1, and then my slope, that'd be down 5 and right 1 from 3. So down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right 1. I just have the same line and then do it again. So I either can use this or this. Pick which one you like best. You can use that when y is by itself. Now let's talk about the domain restriction. X is greater than or equal to 2, so here's what you do. You go to 2 on your X line, and then you need to go either straight up or straight down until you hit the line. In this case, I'd have to go down, and then circle that point. Okay? Circle that point. Now there's two sides of the line. I've broken it into two parts. There's this part. And there's this part, okay? This is right, and this is left, okay? That's right, this is left. If we have a greater than, we need to get rid of the left part, okay? Either erase it or just scribble it all out, okay? So really the line starts here, and then it goes on forever this way, okay? Because at all this points, I just go, you know... 3, 4, 5, 6, and so forth. Now, um, again, if it's greater than, we eliminate the part to the left. Okay, next part, y equals 2 thirds x minus 5. Again, the y is by itself, 
but since I have a denominator of three, I'm gonna pick multiples of three. Okay. So I've got two thirds times zero minus five, that's negative five. Okay. I've got two thirds times three minus five, that's gonna be negative three. Okay, and I'm guessing the next one's going to be negative 1, but I'm going to check just to be sure. 2 thirds times 6 minus 5, it's negative 1. Okay, just like we said. So 0, negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 3, negative 3, 1, 2, 3, down 1, 2, 3. And then 6, negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, down 1. Okay, now I take my ruler and connect the points. Make sure the line is fairly long. It needs to go through the whole graph. Okay, and then again, when Y is by itself, another thing you can do is M and B. So slope and Y intercepts here. Y intercepts negative 5, meaning I have my point at negative 5. Then my slope's 2 over 3. That means every time I go up 2, I go right 3. So up 2, right 3. That'd take me to that. Up 2, right 3, and so forth. Okay, now I have a domain restriction. So I go to negative 1 on the x-axis. And then I just go either straight up, straight down, until I hit that line. Okay, there it is. That's right, and that's left. Okay? right, left. I mean, it's pretty easy. Now that's a less than. If it's a less than, we need to keep the left part and get rid of the right part. Because everything on that line will have x coordinates that are less than negative 1. Okay, now the next one, I do not have the Y by itself, so there's really only one good way to graph it, and that's to use the 0 for X, 0 for Y method. So I write this out, 5X plus negative 2Y equals 20. 5X plus negative 2Y equals 20. Okay, if X is 0, I can eliminate 5X. If y is 0, I can eliminate 2y. So negative 2 times y equals 20, so we need to divide 20 by negative 2, and that's negative 10. If y is 0, then 5 times x equals 20, so we divide by 5, and I get 4. Okay. Now on the y-axis, we're going to have to go by 2s, because anything past 9 on these graphs I made for you, you're not going to make it by 1. So you go down 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So that's 0, negative 10. Now on the x-line, I go to 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. That's 4, 0. Now you just simply connect the dots. So when you don't have the Y by itself, there's really only one good way to graph it. The domain's restricted to X is less than or equal to 3, so I go to 3, and I just, boom, I'm there. That's right, and that's left. So that's a less than sign, so we want to keep the part, we keep the L part, and then get rid of the right part. That means this line can only contain x coordinates that are less than 3, which they will. Okay. Okay, my next part again, the y is not by itself, so the surefire way is to use the 0. So 4x plus negative 6y equals 18. And then I write it down a second time. If you get to the point where you can do it, I mean, without writing that, great. So 4x, get rid of 4x, and then get rid of 6y. Negative 6 times y equals 18, so I divide by negative 6, and that's negative 3. That's your y-intercept, so 0, negative 3. Now, 4, I divide by 4, and 18 divided by 4 is 4.5. So my x-intercept is 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 4.5. Okay, 4.5, 0. So I take my ruler, OK? 
Okay. So negative one. So there's the point on the line where we're at negative one, and that is a greater than. Remember, that's right, that's left. So it's greater than, so I keep the part to the right, I eliminate the part of the line that's to the left. Now, all the everything on this line now will contain only x coordinates that are greater than or equal to negative 1. That's what a domain is. It's just possible x's. Okay, my next one is y by itself. Yeah, it looks like it to me. So there's two good ways to graph it when y is by itself. We can go 0, 1, 2 as long as there's no fraction. And then insert those in. So negative 5 times 0, that's 0. Negative 5 times 1, that's negative 5. And I'm guessing that's negative 10. Okay. So 0, 0. And then 1 negative, that's 0, 0. And then 1 negative 5, I go right 1, down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now I can't hit 2, negative 10, so just screw that, screw it, okay? All right, so, as long as I have just two points, I'm good, I can get my line. You want three if you can, but two if you run out of room. Okay, another way again, I'm just showing you another way, if you like this way better, you can use M and the B would be zero. So slope and y-intercept. So my y-intercept is 0, so that's why that is. And then the slope's negative 5 over 1. So I go down 5, right 1, and it's the same thing. Okay. Now I have two domain restrictions. I have negative 1 and positive 1. Now here's what we do. We keep the part that's um, between and get rid of the outsides. That mean, what that means is anything on this line needs to be between negative 1 and 1. Okay? That's your boundaries for it. Okay, y equals 5 times x minus 2. We got the y's isolated, so again we can use the 0, 1, 2 table and replace that x. So negative 5 times 0 plus, or sorry, minus 2 is negative 2. 5 times 1 minus 2 is 3. 5 times 2 minus 2 is 8. Okay, so 0, negative 2. 1, 3, and then 2, 8. So I go 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, and then we have our line. Okay, and then another way with the y's by itself, we can use m and b, the slope and y-intercept. You don't have to do both these, just pick the one you like better. So, slope is y is negative 2, and there I am. Then the slope is 5 over 1, if you need it to be a ratio. Then you go up 5, right 1, and we'll have the same line, up 5, right 1. So my domain restrictions are negative 1 and 2. So now I go until I hit those points. So here... And then here, there's already a point there. I don't need to make one. So from here to here, I keep, and then I erase the outsides. Okay. Okay, and then the last one. Now we're back to not having the Y by itself, so we want to pick the 0, 0. 2x plus negative 6y equals negative 18. 2x plus negative 6y equals negative 18. So now if x is 0, we can eliminate 2x from the equation. 
and if y is 0, we can eliminate the 6y. So negative 6 times y equals negative 18. I can divide by negative 6, and that gives me 3. So the y-intercept is 0, 3. Now x is 0, so I take y is 0, so I took that out. So 2 times x then equals negative 18, so I divide by 2. It's negative 9. So negative 9, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then I connect those points. So here's my domain restrictions. I go to 4 and negative 4. Okay, so I want every point between. I need to get rid of those. Okay, that's what I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. Let me know if you have questions.